all the way from Azeroth. This is Kingdom Cast with Leia and Serenity. Hello, Eternal Kingdom. I am Leia. And I am Serenity. And welcome to Kingdom Cast. Yay! Yay! So happy spring, Sari. Happy spring. How's the snow? Um, we haven't had any couple weeks, thank goodness. Only a couple weeks. Only a couple weeks. It's been ridiculous. Like <laughs> our our shovel's been on the like out and ready to go for like way too long. I'm I'm glad it's over. No, just in case, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, we it, I mean, it let us game a lot more. <laughs> There's less to it's do. True. <laughs> it's like what you can just you do? huddle in the house. I can't drive. I'll just go play WoW for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, you know. I know, right? What I else mean, are we gonna do, right? I, I didn't get the alpha though, so I mean, that was kind of a bummer. No, I, get, I got, I, get, I got two. I know you did. I wish you could have given me one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get beta yet either. I, I, I never will. They hate me. Blizzard hates. I guess me. you just don't get it. No, Blizzard just like literally hates me. I mean, we're, we started the guild over there and everything, and you're just not gonna join us. I mean, come on. What the the horde guild? <laughs> I am no. over there. No, on the beta. Oh, well, it's spelled correctly this time, right? I don't know. I don't know. I'd go look. Because Kintaria had some issues spelling Eternal last time. <laughs> oh, or no, was it Kingdom Kandaria. was spelled wrong. <laughs> it's Kandaria. What do you expect? Hi, Kandaria. We love you, we swear. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Don't worry. Yeah, he's he's waiting to come on. So um, we before we move on, we gotta uh, give a big shout out to Cell Swords. Congratulations on your Argus kill. They got it. I was watching. We were watching. I know. I had so much fun. I was watching uh, Cell Swords uh, with their progression on Argus for I don't even know how, how long, but it was super fun to watch Hani stream. What did you make her again? So. Every time she got rage from Argus, that she would sometimes she would sing or shout or just say, "I have rage again!" Oh my god, and, you know, just. <laughs> so I made her um, a little macro that every time she got rage, it just said it for her. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun to watch her. Like it, 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 Haunty is a blast to watch during progression. If you don't watch her stream, I highly recommend it when they're on progression. Like mm-hmm. it's great. Um, <laughs> I would fall asleep watching their stream some nights. So <laughs> oh, it, it puts you to sleep. Dang. No, they raid late. We're East Coast. You know that. So it's that's little, okay. It's like 2 a.m. and I'm like watching their stream still. Um, so <laughs> but it's fun. Um, so that was super exciting. It was really cool to be able to see it. Uh, so congrats, yeah, definitely. Congrats, guys. We got a couple teams that are gonna do it again. So yeah, onslaught is getting pretty close. Um, I don't know how for- close force is. They raid a little late, so I don't get to watch their stream. Um, who else is Should on? Close. Is Requiem is Requiem on Argus now? I think Umbra's on Agrimar. So yeah, we got some teams getting close. I think you know before BFA comes out, we'll have we'll have a few more teams there. Uh, I would like. I think it'd be really cool if we could get all of our te- our mythic teams cutting edge. We got a couple months. Uh, I know, you know we do. I pre patch probably probably July something. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, fingers crossed. I think it'd be really cool though. Yeah, we definitely do have time. Yeah, so it's it's been an interesting uh, couple of months. So what are you what are your plans for the day? For the day? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna record some podcast and then probably get some food, <laughs> and then probably go watch a movie and then play some WoW and go to sleep. What are you going to say? Ah, uh, the Avengers. Yeah, just came out. So I I'm I'm never I'm not into that stuff. Like I'm like literally my husband gets so annoyed with me because he'll like want to watch these sci-fi things and he'll he, and he'll complain because i'll be like yeah, i don't want to watch it and he'll he'll be like but you're obsessed with star wars <laughs> 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 I'm like, but that's like where it ends like it's like star wars and then like romantic comedies <laughs> so so you're gonna go see uh the new han solo movie then right oh I, you know what i have to buy our tickets thank you for reminding me you're welcome we always go on the opening weekend on a sunday morning because mm-hmm. we live in uh, Pennsylvania in a, a count in Lancaster County. Um, so most people do not go to the movies on a Sunday morning. They go somewhere else. We take a weekend off from that. We worship Star Wars that day. There you go. So, and then he forgets about the movie like two days later and asks me what happened. What? <laughs> I had to tell him what happened in Revenge. Uh, in Revenge, in uh, the Last Jedi, a bunch. And then he. What happened in Revenge, Revenge of the Sith? Revenge huh? of the Sith. I actually had to tell him that too because he watched it and then like three weeks later was like, "What happened again?" I was like, "Oh my gosh." Aww. I was like, really? Like, the best fight was at the end. You don't remember that? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's kind of hard to forget somebody being burnt alive in lava. <laughs> like, um, well, you know. 
What happens, happens. Yeah, I mean, I guess... I mean, that's a normal, everyday occurrence, isn't of it? Of course, it happens all the time. So, I guess back to some EK stuff. We have our EK of the month. Sarah, you want to tell us who it is? So, our EK of the month, with several votes, is Dancing Water. Dancing Water is the ambassador for Kismet Team. Uh, they are a heroic team that runs on Saturday nights. So, congrats, Dancing Water. Congrats. Uh, if you have somebody that you want to acknowledge, uh, they've helped you out a lot in game. They're really fun to, to raid with. Go ahead to our social media tab in Discord. There is a link there for you to vote. And I am paying five gold for each vote for me. So, um, yeah. It? Wow, you're cheap. I would think it'd be bacon. I said gold, didn't I? Yeah, you should say bacon. I meant bacon. <laughs> I meant bacon. It's like five gold, man. <laughs> I meant bacon. Five gold meant you were a high roller back in vanilla. You could throw out wow. five gold. You were, you were, I mean, yeah. Remember when a hundred gold was a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you had to drop it on your, you had to drop it on your mount. Yep. <laughs> Oh, the good old days. I wonder if they're going to have that in Classic. Oh, I'm sure. Like, it's going to be... Like, the people now... Like, I, I can't wait for some of these people who have you know have been around when things were so much easier to bet, pay for i want to see these people have to like i want them to do a bc one and see them have to pay like what was it like 7500 gold or something just to pay to be able to fly oh, like, five thousand, i think yeah like you didn't earn it like you had to pay for that like, yep. I, I i can't wait i just want to see them complain it's going to be very different from, like, like, a lot of the people now that used to play vanilla. I mean, yeah, they're going to get it. They're, they know what happened there. Yeah. But there's a lot of these newer ones that started, like, you know, the, the last expansion or two. And if they're going to go try it. And you're like, this is so different than what current WoW is. And yeah. just not like it. Yeah, it's it was a completely different monster. Enjoy farming your 100 gold. It's going to take you forever. And instead of going and preparing for raid by going to the auction house? No, no. You're going to go make get your own mats and make your own flats and yeah yeah luck. yeah and i'm sure you won't be able to sell tokens for that either to get the gold oh no I, they're not. gonna it's gonna be like regular classic i would assume so have oh fun. yeah have fun <laughs> we'll see what happens I mean, I mean blizzard's working on it but i mean they haven't announced anything since blizzcon so we'll see what happens there I'm it's I'm probably excited. not gonna be until like 2019 or anything yeah, I know. I'm excited about that, though. I, I really am. Just because, I mean, I remember what it was like, so. Yeah. It'll be when you had to, like, run everywhere. Cause, run? Cause, because the flight pass, that was a lot of money to be paying, like, silver to fly when you could run there. The run through wetlands. That was fun. Zosima loved that run. I know! That, Zosima did love that run. If you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to last month's podcast. So anyway, we have a bunch of really cool things to talk about, too, um, that social media is doing. If you don't know this, this year is the fifth anniversary of Eternal Kingdom. So we're going to be doing some cool stuff to celebrate. And one of the big things that we're doing is we're going to do an anniversary book. Oh, cool. Because <laughs> you had no idea about this. <laughs> There is a, a link for name suggestions. Uh, right now, we're looking for a cool name for the book. Sari, what are some of the cool ones we have so far? We have a couple. Um, I, I think my favorite right now is Bindings Internal. That's kind of cool. That's my favorite right now, too. I like that one a lot. Yeah, definitely. There, there's a couple. The Eternal Kingdom Anniversary Book. That, that's not quite what we're going for, but I mean, that's very straight and to the point. I feel like that was a suggestion made by you. Maybe. <laughs> Five years later, and it's still Snowmantle's fault. Oh, I like that one. Kingdom Chronicles. Oh, I, I like that one, too. That reminds me of, like, a video game. What a long, strange trip in EK. That is true. A royal celebration. Awesome. Quite a couple. So keep them coming in. Uh, we will be deciding on a title in the next month or so. So uh, our people can get working on uh, pictures and such. One of the coolest things we have going on with the anniversary book is we're actually going to have five pages that are going to be up for auction to guild members. The highest, it's going to be like a silent auction and the uh, five highest bids uh, will be, get a page of their own. Um, as long as it's within the guild guidelines, uh, they can make it dedicated to whatever they want. They can make it an entire page dedicated to bacon. Or, I like this uh, idea. <laughs> or a pineapple pizza, if your name is Hanti. Or anti pineapple pizza if your name is alessandra your mythic plus team anything like that um the bidding is going to start at 300k gold and like i said the top five bids will get a page um the proceeds of this will be going to the banking team um towards their goal of having re repairs on for bfa uh, the bidding ends july 16th very cool so we have something else coming up as well. Um, do you did you always want to be a co-host on the, our podcast? This is your chance. The social media team, banking team, are co-hosting a raffle for one lucky EKer 
be a co-host on an upcoming edition of Kingdom Cast. Not only will you be involved in the entire cast, but you'll also be involved in the planning of the episode itself. All proceeds from the raffle will also go to the banking team towards their goal of turning raid repairs back on for BFA. So it's 7,500 gold per ticket. You can send your gold to Jessica with your main tune's name and co-host in the subject line. You can enter as many as times as you want, and you can send enough for multiple tickets in one mail. Deadline to enter is June 30th. I'm I'm looking forward to who's gonna who's gonna win this because this will this will be an interesting podcast. Yeah, yeah. Who's who's gonna win? I feel like Kendari is gonna spend all his gold just so he can like spurt out puns for like 25 minutes. That is a good idea. Oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't have encouraged that. <laughs> or a bad idea. <laughs> don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't give us money. No, don't, we, don't give us money. Ken. We welcome anyone. We're excited for this, and we hope a lot of you participate. All right, guys, coming up, uh, we have uh, three team leads with us, and we also have someone whose fault it's always his. Stay tuned. Uh, welcome back, EK. Our first guests are some of our new team leads. Uh, we have Kendaria. He joined Eternal Kingdom in 2018. He is the team lead of Battalion, a mythic raid team that started in February of 2018. Uh, we also have Trejuvenate. He joined Eternal Kingdom in March of 2018. He is the team lead of Centurion. They are a heroic team that is going mythic, and they started in March of 2018. And finally, we have Bert. Uh, he joined Eternal Kingdom in November of 2017. He took over as a team lead of Imperium in early April. Welcome guys welcome Hello. thank you hi <laughs> kendaria what has been the most surprising thing about being a team lead in internal kingdom i would say uh, the amount of little things that, that that really get on your nerves just the amount of the amount of just why did you do that <laughs> there's a mine there why would you hit it you know it's it's the little things that that you take for granted or just attendance too you know getting getting people motivated to show up for raid is is really important Tree, how about you? I'd say for me, so I, I've been an officer, you know, in past guilds, but I've never really been like a GM or a team lead ever. I guess what surprises to me is when you're at the head of a team, there's a lot of focus on you personally. So you're kind of the um, sort of the first point of contact for everyone, even for, you know, sometimes, especially like was just said, the little things. So when someone's like, oh, is this going to be happening tonight? Or is this going to be happening, you know, next week? Or, you know, just any any small laundry list of things that, you know, needs to be done for a guild to work. You are kind of kind of the front desk and whether you have those answers or not. How about you, Bert? I completely agree with that answer. I mean, the I, I walked into this having done a bunch of strategy work recently for our team. And so I had, I was like organized in that way. But then stepping into the team lead, I was now looking at roster and dealing with honestly, like whispers and raid is probably the biggest difference for me so far, because I'm so bad at that. I'm usually like, trying to like look at the logs and be like, okay, what happened there? Maybe we had death note. And then, <laughs> and now I'm dealing with the other side of it, the uh, interpersonal. And that is definitely the most surprising challenge at least i think the worst thing about being in that position as somebody who is an ambassador of a team is is uh the the whispers like you said but the whispers that are like really really like petty sometimes but some of the things are like somebody said this thing i don't like that do something about it it's like well can i wait till we're done now now children <laughs> Just to kind of piggyback on that, too, the amount of, of things that people will ask you if it's okay to do or not, you know? Hey, is it okay if I go to Hero? You can do whatever you want. I can't force you to do anything, you know? But the amount of little things, too, it's it's almost like you have to play. It's sort of like a glorified babysitter, really. I mean, it sounds horrible, yeah, but much. it's... It's kind of true. true. It, yeah. It's hurting cats. It's hurting cats. Glorified shepherd. How about that? That sounds way better. Uh, that does sound better than a babysitter. <laughs> um, so, over, what has been the most challenging aspect of team leading? That's definitely, honestly, the biggest one. The communication side of it, for me, probably within Raid, is definitely part of it. And since we've been sort of transitioning philosophy-wise, that's also been a big challenge, is uh, handling sort of the balance between having enough bodies, one, um, having an appropriate amount of like sitting or who we're asking to sit and not and making sure that there's a balance there while also getting everything else organized at the same time and dealing with those challenges in raid. Um, I think that the sort of the like combination of all of that and having never team led before is definitely 
the biggest challenge I'm facing. How about you, Tree? Well, for me, since we're kind of building this, you know, a large of it from kind of from the ground up, really trying to find like the balance of a roster. So really, you, you, I've had to make some decisions here and there. It's like, okay, well, do we really want to put ourselves in a position where we need to add like we want to we could end up with like three rep paladins in the raid in especially um, in Antorus. War with them. Yeah, right. So I, I'm I'm sympathetic to that as a rest of Druid of wanting more wisdom in the raid. We also have a disc priest as well who i usually let have the wisdom as first priority you do, just from like a practical standpoint i know from like you know these are things i talk about with my you know the rest of my leadership is oh well when we get to some of the later bosses like ma- having more melee is very heavily punished so while this would be good for us you know early on stomping through mythic it'll be fine but like some of the later bosses melee like coven very heavily punishes melee like you're so favored on that fight if you have more ranged so it's like thinking about things Things going down the f- down the road and being like, okay, well, if we do this, how are we going to account for that in the future? And trying to like come up with like plans and so forth on that line. Kendaria, um, I would say most challenging is recruitment. Honestly, it's been building something that involves a lot of people is always going to be stressful, especially when people disappear for no reason. You know, you'll show up to raid one day and all of a sudden, six people that were there last week are no longer there and they have. Not said a word. So I would say recruitment. That's always fun when, like, especially with the people you care about and they disappear and you, like, are curious if something actually happened to them or they just ghosted. That's always fun. Are they still okay? Yeah, we had people like that. Like, we really thought something happened to them and finally they came back to the game, but we were worried about them for like three months. Mm -hmm. So, Tree, is there support from the community outside of your team? Yeah, I would say one thing that's really won over, like, a lot of the people that I brought into EK originally, there were people that have had, like, varying degrees of enthusiasm about the idea. There were some like myself that were extremely enthusiastic, some that were not so much. And I think really we've had a lot of help from various, you know, people, uh, including yourself, Serenity, that um, has really made like a big effect on us getting just like learning about like the EK culture, like what what processes there are for everything. Notably on the on some of the other team lead sides, uh, Hantavirus of Cell Swords has uh, reached out to me quite a bit and uh, worked with me and kind of got me up to speed a lot. So I've been pretty thankful to her um we haven't picked up any mercs yet but there's a pretty strong possibility that we'll do that either this week or next week because we're getting pretty close to being able to fill our roster in for mythic i think we're going to be looking at it's either it's either this coming week or the following lockout but we'll see what happens that's exciting yeah definitely yeah very that's awesome i can't wait to see how you guys do yeah me either (laughs) (laughs) i can dare you so the community, it's its interesting being a part of a community this big because a lot of other teams, or should I say guilds, don't have access to the resources we have from uh, people that know what they're doing as far as class specs and strategy and all that stuff goes to just, you know, people in general. You know, you can get a lot of experience from people that have been here longer, been doing this a lot longer than you. So it's, it's cool that there's so many resources here if you have a question about anything related into the game or the guild or anything and i think that's one thing that people take for granted is how much we actually have together so it's really cool but as far as mercenaries go uh yeah we definitely when we were starting our team we definitely relied on on the mercenaries quite a bit we leaned on them pretty heavily and we actually had a couple of them join our team permanently on a permanent basis because they liked it so much and uh, they they just had a good time so it was it's really cool that's good they were able to find them yeah we're helping the home most people here no I, I thought they i thought they were all i thought mercs were all like kaylee's cats that she's adopting out that's probably <laughs> the most amusing way of that being described that i've heard yet oh she she says that like they're her <laughs> children no my children Aww, we'll have to find it in I think it was Templar oh, yeah, Chat one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we said it was a bunch of, it was a bunch of cats. She was, yeah, was great. Subvert. Like Kindara said, the guild resources that we have in such like like just with the volume that we have is pretty amazing. And the banking team working hard to get us, you know, the mats and stuff for a rating. Um 
is obviously huge. And then in terms of Mercs, we've definitely had a few that helped us out like in critical roles uh, on progression on Kingroth actually recently. Um, we managed to get it as a team, but we had a lot of people help us continue to do that consistently. We've had other teams help us out. Notably, P Team helped us out on a Friday night. Like we have almost the same raid schedule. So their raiders, if they're on for Fridays, they can join us. And if we're on for Thursdays, we can join them. And I know Snow, our ambassador, joined them this past week. So that's been nice, a little partnership kind of thing. And then obviously recruitment team. Uh, I mean, it's huge, not just with mercenaries, but with just with helping to organize and communicate recruits is critical. So Ver, how would you describe your team? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this be one, careful I've been, now. I've been thinking, well, I mean, here's my here's my big thing is we're growing. And, and I, I would describe our team as like, we're, you know, we're silly between polls, like the second that a poll ends and like any uh, whiff of a break is smelled, people just burst into conversation about anything. Um, I love it. Mm -hmm. it. It usually basically, you know, we're serious during poll after about 20 seconds or so of saying, hey, guys, focus, uh, clear disc kind of thing. Then it then it tails off and we're, you know, we're, there's more fun still in that poll, I'd say, than the polls where there wasn't a break. But I think we're pretty focused in that way. Uh, we have a bunch of, I think, I think Aaron said that we were like lovable misfits or something. Yes, we are. Yeah. Nice. Um, a group of lovable and loving misfits. I don't disagree with that. I love I love our team, but we're also growing and we're transitioning a bit, little bit. And the next question, sort of, it's in philosophy. It's in we have a lot of people that are really hungry to push, and we're trying to push uh, in an appropriate manner that is that allows the opportunity for growth for everyone. So um, I would describe our team while it's not like said as an option between progression rating and cutting edge. I would describe our team as a mastery team. Like not, we're not a learning team, but we're um, I'm trying to stay on top of people in terms of you and macros and weak auras and the minimal things that that also maximize your performance uh that's how i would describe us we're we're, we're hungry uh, and we're grown and we're crazy and we're crazy. And, crazy and we have to do with leia <laughs> i mean i was watching leia's stream the other night and we something started and traveled over to the leadership chats what happened there leia <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh, uh, what well, we decided because Zate was in my my stream, but I don't think he was really paying attention. So we decided that we were gonna make Zate think that the kingdom was falling. So we all just kept tagging Zate in Templar because he was, you know, running something, and we wanted to distract him because it's fun. <laughs> His response was, was the best too. What it the was. hell is going was on in here? <laughs> <laughs> I told you kids not to play with that. Now look what happened. He was carrying a Mythic 20, too. We really interrupted that. Oh, oh yeah. Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was, he was carrying it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the real. screenshot. I saw the <laughs> screenshot. It's him lying on the floor dead with, like, halos around him. <laughs> Tree, Tr how would you describe your team? It's pretty... I, I would say it's a really highly competitive team, um, but something that we've really worked to like kind of lay the foundation of from the beginning is like we really want to encourage everyone to be like really highly competitive with each other. But that can't be the ends can't justify the means. So, yes, like, you know, your parses are cool and all like we want you to do that. <laughs> but <sorry. laughs> if it comes at the. Sorry, that was just funny. Your parses are cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true, though, right? Like. <laughs> I mean, like, I want to find people and play with people that, like, can play well, but, like, if you parse 99% for the first 30 seconds of the fight, and then you're dead for the next seven minutes, you're not really playing for the team. So, in the end, like, the way that I've, I've tried to describe my team to everyone is that we want people that can play, and we want people that can play competitively, but it also is going to be, like, like mechanics above everything. Like, your, your parses aren't going to wow us if you got that 99 parse, but you also caused 15 wipes in a night, or, you you know, you were dead, you know, 90% of the time. So, I've kind of described it, the word I've used, I don't, and I don't know if this is a real word or not, but I've called it a meritocracy, and I hope that that's a real word. But um, so everything that like that we decide and that we do is all going to be based on merit. And it's all about the team over the individual. I've got a lot of people that have kind of followed me that can both not only play multiple specs and are willing to do that, but also have that like attitude where, yeah, we've been friends for 10 years. But if I ask you to sit out for a boss, you know, you know that it's not personal. It's not like some sort of statement about your performance, like just maybe that your class isn't, you know, very good on this fight for instance. 
instance. And so that's that's kind of like the overarching philosophy as to how I'm approaching this and how all of the people in my orbit are doing so as well. So, Trey, I know you have some higher progressed people that have joined your team. What is like the environment like? Like, are you guys laid back? Are you like really rigid? Like, what? So, we have people that are coming from like a pretty wide variety of backgrounds. So, I've got a couple people that are that actually just got cutting edge uh, this past week, but they had committed to us once we were ready, and they were pretty much only going to stick around for reasons that I'm not going to get into uh, with their present guild until they killed Mythic Argus for the first time. They really wanted to get away from that because of some major toxicity problems in their raid, just to name a single reason. So I have like that perspective from there, and I've I've obviously played in guilds of varying you know, personalities in the past. I've played in very laid back guilds. I've played in very rigid guilds. And I think it's all about like trying to like find that balance, for instance. So there are times where you have to, you know, you've got every, the, the classic comparison is the carrot and the stick. So you have to know, okay, well, when can we be a little bit more gentler with this? And if someone's really causing a problem, you know, late, well, not that we've ran into that yet because we've been, we've been screening pretty carefully, you know, when to use the stick. And so far we haven't had to use the stick yet. I, I foresee that it will become a thing later down the road. No, don't use the stick on me. Vert, don't get any ideas. <laughs> Me and I were talking. Yeah. But for me, I, I always know that w- one thing that I've seen in past raid teams, and it's lo- it's when you allow someone with a strong and toxic personality to kind of grow out of hand and to drive people. And that's really something that I'm like particularly sensitive to in that I've seen it happen far too many times, especially in places where I haven't been in leadership and therefore couldn't do anything about it. So one of the reasons that I was very open and kind of desiring to start my own team is so that I could prevent a situation like that from arising again, where a problematic person starts driving away really good players from your team. And I think we've probably all seen that happen in, at one point or another in our playing career. Kendaria, how would you describe your team? Right now? So there's there's two different teams here that, that I'm, I'm so the, it's going to be the Legion team and the BFA team. So right now, wh- what I wanted to do is basically make Legion like a huge trial run for everybody on the team. Because because in BFA, we're going to be number one. That's that's it. No, so that's the philosophy. Wait, hold on. Number one, number one in the guild? Yep. Watch out. Number, oh, one, in, number in one in the, one world. In the guild. World. We are. We are <laughs> Watch out, Haunting. We are, it's coming for We you. are going to be in the top. So that's basically we're just working towards that at this point. We're weeding. We're trying to instill, instill the the top tier raider mentality into people whereas you know you do your own homework you figure out why you died and you improve upon yourself it's more i think personally it's more important that people want to improve more for themselves rather than for somebody else because that way they have a a personal vested interest in doing so and it will produce more results wow i wasn't expecting a serious kendari answer whoo we we do take it pretty pretty laid back, you know, but everybody knows what we're going for, what the ultimate goal is, you know, and at the end of the day we all play this game to have fun, you know. We don't we don't play this game for more stress in our life. We play it for less stress in our life. So that is the most important thing, you know. If I've told my team several times, if there's any time when you are not having fun, you let me know and, and if you have to take a break, so be it. But you know, it's a better raid environment when everybody is here and and they want to be here rather than playing like they have to be. Very true. What's your uh, what's your team's philosophy? Never stop improving. I like it. Tree? I don't know if I've come up with like a good slogan yet for it. I mean, I, I guess I kind of went over it a little bit in my last answer as well. But one thing I've kind of tried to go over with originally with everyone, like I've, I've kind of tried to sit down with everyone. And I I, I know I mentioned meritocracy before, but I, I, I really want something that I've, I've seen arise in the past is that like, don't take it too seriously, kind of like, yeah, it's a game. Yeah, have fun with it. But at the same time, like, you know, the, the type of people that I'm bringing on, like we want to see see like cutting edge every tier but at the same time you know don't kill yourself over it there's your slogan right there oh, <laughs> no, that's way too long-winded no it's not it's good how about you vert 
Um, yeah, I felt like you guys did a better job of merging the two questions together. Um, and I, I like see ourselves as a mastery team. And I think I mirror a lot of the philosophies that Sri mentioned and, and that Ken at least implied. It's really about cultivating a culture that's like focused on mastery and enjoying that process. In terms of the guild, I think that I, I love the pillars. It's the part of the reason why I joined this place. I've also dealt with and like experienced the single person that sort of can cause players to move away or the leadership position that causes players to move away or whatever it is and um and so the pillars to me are like i hold them in very high regard i expect the team to and the philosophy is from there is be resilient enjoy sort of the process of growing and making mistakes and getting better at the game enjoy the collaboration that we have with each other here i mean the guild is just this amazing opportunity for collaboration whether it be mythic plus knowledge about the game understanding mechanics and specs i mean you can go on and on about all of the resources that are available to each of us and then in the end it's about being professional and, and treating everybody with respect and working towards those kills and cutting edge. And eventually that's what, I mean, we're going for that in BFA as well. And more on that later, perhaps. But well, that answers most of my questions. I'll see you at the top. <laughs> what, what are you, so what are your team's goals for the remainder of this tier? Bert? For the remainder of the tier, um, we're looking to improve and recruit and see where everybody's getting to. We're trying to push people to be ready for a more intense cutting edge, like push kind of thing. That's for BFA. And here at, within this tier, while we're training while we're learning i'm a sports performance coach by trade so i'm going to use those words uh while we're practicing the fundamentals and uh and you know working on our team skills we will um we're also pushing towards ce we just got king Groth this last week and we're going to continue to push as if we'll have time to kill argus and hopefully we will we will i admire your confidence <laughs> all right what about you tree well, it's ambitious, but we're going to really try to get cutting edge by the end of Legion. Most of the people that have come over with me are anywhere from, uh, I'd say like the core 10, 10, 11 that kind of followed me over were about 9 of 11 Mythic as of about a month ago. Got three people that are 11 of 11 presently. So it's going to be tough because there's, you know, whenever you're putting together a new team, you're always looking like there's things that you don't foresee because you always have to learn to play together with a bunch of new people. So that's one of the biggest things. Um, I think we have have most people are estimating the pre-patch to probably hit in mid-July so that's probably nine lockouts remaining if I'm doing that correctly so we're going to be cutting it close um, if we don't actually get CE but we get Argus before the end before BFA launches I'll be very happy I'm not going to really try to set any sort of like ranking or anything like that but I think like probably the level of play that we're going for in BFA I think I'm aiming for like US 200 US 250 I'd be very happy with that Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. We appreciate hearing from you. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you. And if anyone's interested in joining one of these teams, uh, feel free to check out our website, eternal-kingdom.com, to check out our current recruitment needs. Welcome back, EK. We have Snowmantle with us now. Uh, Snowmantle joined Eternal Kingdom in August 2017 from a guild merger. She's the team lead of guild mergers and partnerships and ambassador of Imperium and runs the open run last minute Monday. Welcome, Snow. Yeah, welcome, Thank Snow. You. So you came in from a merger yourself. So did that inspire you to want to work with the Guild Merger Group? It definitely did. Um, I mean, I had already been doing a little bit of work with recruitment, and they just they asked me to step up and take over Guild Mergers. How do you like it so far? I'm enjoying it because I get to talk to a lot of people, which is what I like to do. She's a good talker. I um I actually came in like you said in August uh, with a a smaller ish guild of um uh, there were like seven or eight of us that came over the guild was beginning of Tomb of Sargeras our favorite raid <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie and we were making our way through heroic we were almost complete through heroic and it became really clear that we were trying to get into mythic and we were always a few people short so uh, one of our team members uh, Mings who was actually went by a different name at that point. Uh, knew about EK because of his son. His son uh, is a member of Force. Originally, he just came and he told me, well, I'm leaving. And he was my co-tank at the time. And so I was like, well, great. Now my co-tank's leaving. And it's someone I really like and respect. Uh, what am I going to do? You know, I don't I don't know that I want to stick it out here because it's obvious to me that we're not going to get into Mythic. Well, then he came back and he was like, oh, well, it turns out they have a guild merger program. And, you know, we should really talk to people and look into this. So we did. And originally it was only maybe three or four of us, but then the other people in our guild heard about it and a few more of them came over. And so altogether, I think nine or 10 of us came over 
Um, several of us are currently on Imperium. A couple, uh, n <laughs> another one is on, another one is on uh, Harbinger, and a, a couple others are just sort of floating around the guild, or um, or have just you know quit the game for now. But overall, I think it was a fairly successful merger because a good uh, a good chunk of us ended up staying. So how was um your mer what was your merger experience like with EK? I mean, it was pretty smooth. It was. Obvious that we weren't their first guild merger. The uh, person who was handling guild mergers at that time, Majestus, spoke to us. We had a little bit of a weird situation. We didn't want to tell our guild master about it. Um, normally with guild mergers, we like to talk to the guild master, but our guild master was a somewhat toxic individual. That was another reason why we were having trouble keeping numbers up and recruiting. And all of us, I think, were just sort of a little tired of dealing with it. And so instead, we, we got one of our other officers to sort of uh, be the point person. Uh, and we worked it out that way. But it was it was relatively smooth. Uh, we all came to the server because we had been on a different server, uh, transferred over, got in the guild. And, you know, within a, within a month, I think most of us had found teams. Those of us who were still really interested in raiding at least had. I know we're glad to have you. <laughs> your your guild merger and there have been other guild mergers that have been and have been pretty cool, but yours is my favorite. Is that because she's on Imperium? Well, no, because we have another one that came in because that's all on our team too. But I just think that I don't know. I, I think it was it was the most it was like the smoothest guild merge we've ever had. The most recent one we had is really good too. Yeah, I just think a lot of it has to do with the personalities of the people, and yeah, you know, the, a guild merger is not going to work if the people coming in don't match our values. And when I saw the values of this guild, I mean, that for me was really important because I was I was very unhappy dealing with a toxic raid leader. And I don't think that that sort of thing is is <laughs> looked well upon at all in this guild. He never would have been able to make it in this guild, as an example. Just just very disrespectful of people. Yeah, that's not good. So why are mergers important to the guild? Well, especially, you know, when you look at uh, times like now, when we are, um, when when teams are, you know, it's, it's the end of the X-Pack and people are leaving and People are getting burnt out and want to take a break. You know, getting not just one person trickling in at a time, but getting five or six or seven or 10 or 12 people all at once is really helpful to the different teams. And it's like, you know that they can work together in a team environment because they are all coming over as part of a team. And you know that they're interested enough in us to make that commitment. The The group that's that's that I have coming in like right now, I mean, we've got seven of them that are making that transfer from another uh, server. Uh, and that's a huge commitment. Right. I mean, especially if, you know, it's someone who doesn't have a lot of money. You know, it's important because it's new blood. Um, it's important because it also can bring different points of view. You know, one of the things I found within the guild by just going to other teams runs or going to open runs that are run by people from other teams, I see different strategies. I see different different attitudes even towards towards rating and I think that having, you know, having an entire new team of people coming from outside the guild exposes us to more of that. I think what I've always noticed about mergers is they seem to come at like the best times. Like I want to say like the one that we just had, I forget what the name of the guild was, but um, well, there was a, the merger of Obsidian that was back in like January and that came in at like the perfect time because specifically our team was hurting for certain spots and these people came in and they're what we were looking for. Like we had Sale come in and Gyro with his repair anvils what are they called <laughs> auto hammers yeah, auto one. hammers <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that was that was another really good merger too. Like they, my two favorite mergers are yours and theirs. I mean, it's probably because I play with you guys, but also, but yeah, no bias, no, no bias, bias at all. not at all. But I really think like they always seem to come at the the, the best times where like there's a team that's just like really hurting, and then suddenly Snow's like, hey, we got a guild merger. It's like, oh okay. Surprise! Happy and then, birthday! And, and are like, credit where credit is due. Um, this last one actually came from the recruitment team. Uh, they reached out to the recruitment team because they saw one of the recruitment team's posts, and then the recruitment team reached out to me. Woohoo! Good job, team. And, and and I know if I'm if I'm looking for stuff on the forums, I'll send you links too. If I see groups of like large people. Yeah, exactly. And and that's always appreciated. In fact, that is the hardest part of my job is is getting the leads in the first place. Because usually when these happen, the guild mergers happen because teams are essentially falling apart or they're not getting the numbers. And if you don't act on that quickly, 
people will drift to different places before I even get a chance to talk to them. And they don't want to split up. And they don't usually want to split up, but that's often what ends up happening, at least when and when they come to EK, even though they may end up on different teams, at least they're in the same guild. Yeah. And even if they don't find a team right away, I mean, we still have so many open runs that they can join or any other things like that. Exactly. There's so much to and do. And in my experience, if if the person is trying hard, they will find a team. Um, it's, oh, yeah. The ones who don't find a team are the ones that are just kind of like they expect things to happen to them, if that makes sense. Whereas if a guild merger comes in and is like, I'm going to find a team, and they just keep talking to people, they keep showing up to open runs, they, they work on their logs, you know, could, because, for example, they may come in and they may not have the best logs right away. But if they spend a, a, some time on some of these open runs, uh, possibly even get invited to some of the team harassment heroic runs or whatever and then and work on the logs there and people can see that they're getting better because people look especially now when um, oh, yeah. when a lot of teams are struggling people are going to look at these logs and they're like well okay that person doesn't have the best logs but i've seen improvement over the last two weeks they've obviously been putting some effort into it you know maybe i'll give them a shot maybe we can have people on the team that can help them out you know by giving them suggestions or whatever because really when you think about it it's not just the you know super awesome mythic player that we want or that has something to um to give it's if people are willing to put in the time i mean i have every confidence that most people are able to play at a mythic level as long as they're willing to put in the time and that effort by someone entering the guild i think shows can show that to team leads um and they might be willing to take a chance especially since they're already in the guild and there are people who have maybe been in the cup for a couple of months and maybe there were no teams that were looking for their specific position at the time but then the team has that need and they they will bring them in like we and did one recently. of the things that i want to encourage guild mergers to do is to qualify as mercenaries yes um, cause, because they will get used and picked up they will get used, they'll get picked up, and it's also a way that, you know, if a team picks you up as a mercenary once or twice and they really like you, they might enjoy you, they might invite you to trial. So, but I also know, because I know one of the people coming over in this current guild merger uh, was a tank that's worried about finding a spot. And I've looked at his numbers and they look pretty good. It's just, and I know there's a couple teams looking for tanks right now, so hopefully he'll be able to find a spot. But he's well aware that, um, you know, that's one of the hardest roles to, to actually find a position. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, there's only two on a team. I mean, there's, you know, DPS that have a tank off spec, but it's a lot easier to find a DPS spot, you know, and then even a healer spot. So how can a guild or large group get started with a guild merger? I mean, the first step is getting in contact with me and we start talking. And the, the first thing to figure out is whether we're a good fit, because not every group of people that wants to come in is a good fit, right? If they are not willing to follow our professionalism pillar, I think, which is a big one. Um, they're not a good fit for this guild. And it's it's important that we recognize that right away so that we can move on and they can move on. There are, um, and in fact, probably the biggest sticking point that I see is sometimes people don't want to be split up onto other teams. And I completely understand that. It's just, it's very tricky. Again, you know, we talk with them. I explain how the process works. Uh, you know, I tell them about the guild. I send them to the website. I even tell them all the good things to look at on the website. At that point, you know, we decide whether we want to move forward. Well, they can also, the one thing is with, we have open runs. So even if they're not on a specified team together, they can still right. like, go to one of the fun runs together. So they can still essentially raid together. Fun runs are actually a tool that I use to say, hey, you know, if you're if you're in doubt, if you have any questions, we run fun runs all week. You know, take a look at our website, look at the events section. It lists who, who the contact person is for each of those runs. You know, look at the time. You might want to contact that person, you know, 20 or 30 minutes before the run starts. Let them know. But, you know, come in and check us out. So what's the what's the process that happens? So essentially, um, we get the guild master or an officer of the guild into um, into the guild once the, once the guild decides that they want to move forward. So what we do is we get them into the guild, uh, we pro promote them to Templar, and they have the permission to invite whoever they want for a month. And then what I also do at the same time is I give them a spreadsheet that they fill out listing all of their team members that, w that want to come into the guild, you know, and it's very similar to the same information that we ask in recruitment, you know, what is their what's their main spec what's their off spec what's their item level can we get logs can we get your armory and what what teams are they interested in and we take all that information and we're going to put it put it in the recruitment spreadsheet so that team leads have a single spot where they can look at everyone basically at that point you know the people are already in the guild 
and team leads can start talking to them and and hopefully getting them on teams. But it's a pretty it's a pretty straightforward and quick process as opposed to like our normal our normal recruitment process. So what can someone uh, coming in from a guild merger expect from leadership? Basically, what they can expect from me is that I will try to find them a place. I don't just try to get people in the guild. I try to make sure that they have somewhere to go. Or if they are able to find a place, then to help them help them move on and realize, you know, they can always come back. Uh, usually, I have found the people that don't find places, again, are the ones that just, they log in, they, you know, for a week or two after the merger, and that and then that's it. It. They're like, well, I haven't found a team. I'm, I'm just not going to log in anymore. Um, and that's unfortunate. And that's why I work hard to try to get everyone a place as quickly as possible. Like I said, the ones that stick around and and actually actively work at it, they check the recruitment page every day. You know, oh, hey, you know, um, G Team is now looking for my spec. I'm going to apply today. You know, um, usually I don't have them apply right away because then they're in the recruitment spreadsheet twice. But I do tell them that you know after it's been a little while, and if you haven't heard anything, you know, go ahead and apply just like uh, anyone else would. Just let them know you're already in the guild. And what can they expect from the community at large? I mean, honestly, uh, you, they can expect the community to be pretty welcoming. Just last night, I invited the uh, officer from Equilibrium, the, the new guild merger that's taking place right now. I introduced him to the guild, and I think he had like a dozen people welcoming to the guild right at that time and point. And, you know, it, it, it might take a while to start meeting people and stuff, but they will definitely find that the people in this guild are very welcoming. We interviewed some people who actually came in via Guild Merger a couple months ago, and one of them was uh, Chocolate Mix. Um, He's on Onslaught. And I remember he said that one of the first things that happened when he joined the Guild is 10 minutes later, someone's like, hey, you want to come run a Mythic Plus? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it does happen. Yeah, because, well, people are always running that. So there's just so many people. Like, there's just so, there's so many opportunities to be running stuff. Like, you know, you can, be right. in for a, you can be in for a day and you're, you know, in a fun run. You can be in it for an hour. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Exactly. Doesn't ta- it does not take long. And and the other thing they can really expect from the community is simply that there's a lot of people on. I remember uh, my first week in this guild. I'm like, is there ever less than 100 people on at once? <laughs> that was in the same interview. That was what Ming said. I said, like, what was his first thought about Eternal Kingdom? And he said, he said, there are people online. Yeah. Yep. I mean, my old guild, it's like people were rarely on outside of Raid. And that doesn't happen here. There's, I mean, it, it does. I mean, some people play like that especially this late in the x-pack but yes but in general there's always someone on yeah oh yeah right i mean i'm over in the on the the horde guild though we had 10 people on last night i'm like whoa this is so cool because <laughs> normally since it's horde right now we don't have many people on so so i, I hear too. i heard that too i heard some Apparently rumblings. we're all hearing the same rumors got some That's rumblings weird. i wonder where they came from <laughs> hmm jessica anyway so snow mantle why is everything your fault oh lord <laughs> Um, I blame Mist for that. <laughs> he is uh, on... Well, actually, it's both Mist and Leia's fault, really. I I basically... One of the first things, and the first way, I guess, I became an officer in this guild, the first thing that I did was I would handle thread bumps. And so what thread bumps are, are um, we have a bunch of threads. Each team, like, has... each Most of the teams, at least, have a recruitment thread on the WoW forums. And so my job is to go in and post something at the bottom of the thread to bump the thread back up to the top. So it's Friday and I normally do my thread bumps on Saturday. So I say something to the effect of, you know, hey, everybody, make sure that your your threads are up to date because I'm going to bump them soon. And, you know, you want them to be up to date for what you're looking for, what your progress is. Right. And then I go to work and my (laughs) phone blows up and (laughs) it's like I log into um, Discord when I'm at work and I start looking and there's like a hundred and something messages in Templar chat. And I'm like, what? is go and and i'm tagged in like half of them so yeah i look back at what started it all and it was it was leia and mist had started by tagging me and it just it literally exploded from there so basically that was that was one of my more fun fridays at work because i think um templar chat was kept hopping all day and it was um it was pretty funny so in honor of that they decided to name a channel after that called snow mantle's fault that is the best officer channel we have (laughs) 
you know, I, I, I thought they were going to say get rid of the channel after, uh, after that. It's still uh, there. Still uh, there. Subsided. <laughs> but no, we've we've kept it, and it's the greatest channel ever. And when things are randomly like happening that we don't like, we just go in there and blame them. Like, I blame snow for it snowing here in, in April. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when Zate blamed me for stubbing his toe? Yes. <laughs> It was great. He he enjoyed that. He enjoyed he when really he was did. not. He liked because we weren't tagging him, but then we did it again. Now. Yeah. Snow, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for everything you do for the guild. Uh, it is greatly appreciated by everybody. Oh, you're very welcome. You're a great scapegoat. Yeah, that 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 I'm sure adds quite a bit of value. Oh, of and course. You're a, fant- you're a fantastic tank and a good friend. Uh, if you are a guild that is struggling to get numbers to raid or a large group of friends looking for a community to be a part of together, please get in contact with Snowmantle at Snowmantle hashtag 11528. So thanks for listening to this month's podcast. Uh, we'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>